everybody and welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't been here before, my name is Rosemary and I do a lot of different kinds of crafts and sewing in my sewing room. And um, le the last couple of weeks we've been making dolls and this is the doll that we made last week and I put hair on her as you can see. And I promised that today we would show, I would show you how to make um, some clothes for her, try and keep it kind of simple. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make her some pants. And um, the easiest way to do that is to get some freezer paper. Uh, this is very inexpensive. You can buy it at basically grocery stores or any big box store. It's got wax on one side and it's paper on the other. It makes great pattern paper and you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. It's probably less than $5. Okay, so I moved the camera. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm going to do. I have laid my wax paper down on my countertop with the waxy side down. This paper side is very easy to draw on. I'm going to take my doll and I'm going to lay her on top like this. And then I'm going to take just a regular pen. You can use a pencil if you're more comfortable with that. I need to mark her waist. So I'm going to make a mark on this side and a mark on this side so I know how big her waist is. Now if you've made clothes before, you know that pants have like a curve where the crotch is at. So I'm going to draw just like a curve coming out like this. And it's a doll, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to have a little bit of a curve there. And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom of her leg, and I'm going to draw a line for how long her leg is. And then I'm going to um, draw a line in between her legs here, so I get a kind of an idea about how big um, her, her leg is. So now I'm going to move this out of the way and move this down where you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to make a line from here to the crotch area. I'm going to make a line from here to how wide her waist is and then measure that and cut it in half because I'm going to put this on a fold. And then I'm going to make a line to the bottom of her leg like this. And then I'm going to cut that out and then cut it out of a piece of scrap fabric, like a piece of muslin or something, and try it on my doll and see if it fits. And here's the pattern that I've ended up with. And I laid it on to a piece of stretchy knit fabric. You want this fabric to be very stretchy because they were, we're making leggings. So we don't want to um, have to struggle to get that over the doll's legs. So um, go to your fabric store and find some really stretchy fabric. If you don't, if you want to make them out of denim, um, just cut it a little bigger. Don't make it so tight so that it'll go up over her her legs when you're all done. But I, um, I after I've cut this out, I'm going to lay it onto my doll and measure it around her waist. See, I know that's going to fit her pretty good. And that way my pattern's good and I can make it a whole lot of times for this doll pattern without any problem. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew first. I have to put right sides together. I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to sew this curve right here and then I'll be right back. And so I'm back from the sewing machine and here is my pants and I sewed this in black thread so you could see what I was doing. I sewed straight down this curve on this side and straight down that this curve on this side. So then what you're going to do is you're going to open them up and put the crotch seams together like this and you can put push them open with your thumbs and pin them right there so that they're nice and flat and you don't get a lot of bulk in that part. And then just sew straight from here to here and then from here to here to the ends. And then go ahead and turn it inside out. So that's what I did here and you can see the, the stitches that I've done all the way down the sides of the legs. And now I'm going to turn it inside out. Now, um, wait, before I turn it inside out, I want to show you the ends of the legs here. What I do and you don't have to do it my way, but I just turn it inside out like this and roll the hem down and stitch it by hand. It doesn't take very long. I usually do it in front of the TV set at night. It's a nice calming way to sew and I don't struggle with trying to make that stretch knit do exactly what I want to. And I can actually put it on my doll 
and measure it and make sure that I have the right length. And then the top part, you're going to just fold down like this and then go ahead and put it on your doll because this um, doll is a display only doll. It's not a child's play thing who's going to want to change her clothes and you're probably never going to take her clothes off of her. So you can actually, after you've done her hem and you've put it on her, you can fold the top down and stitch it right to her waist. And that way, not only does it hide the buttons that we don't really want to see, um, but it you don't have to put elastic in it or anything like that. You're just going to stitch it right to the doll. Um, so I wanted to kind of just mention this fabric right here is Wonder Woman fabric. The fabric that I showed you before was Nightmare Before Christmas. There's a lot of really cute stretch knit fabrics that are, aren't really big pictures that you can get at the stores or you could just do it in a really fun stripe or a solid black if you wanted to do it in that it's kind of up to you whatever it is you want i do like this wonder woman fabric a whole lot i think i'm going to go back and see if i can find some more it actually says on it if you can read it it says grace wonder fierce strength justice um, and so that's kind of like the theme of what we're trying to do with our dolls here is to tell women to fight strong. And I really like this book here. I did this in a Bible study probably about six or seven years ago. It's called Warrior Chicks. And it says, Rising Strong, Beautiful, and Confident. It's by a lady. Her name is Holly Wagner. It's a really good book. If you haven't read it, go out and get it. I think you'd really like it. One of the things it says on the back, um, it says, I think Warrior Tricks is Holly's best work yet. This one will make you laugh and cry, yet it will inspire you to greatness as you discover that you are not a victim or a survivor, but an overcomer. And um, I find that very touching. Um, so yeah, I, I would really recommend that book. So, okay, let's um, get back to making a doll. Um, so the next part I do is I, I again, buy really stretchy fabric, something that has a lot of stretch to it. This is actually a, um, a rib knit. It makes a great t-shirt. You can put it in your... Um, embroidery machine and embroider on it. I've shown you a couple times how to make your uh, stretchy knit stick to the stabilizer so that you can embroider on it. And I have embroidered on this one here, uh, the one that I showed you last week, Dance in the Rain, Deuteronomy 3019. Excuse me, I dropped this other one on the floor. Um, and this is another one that I um, have found just recently that I want to put on my dolls. It says, grab the promised hope. And that is Hebrews 6, 18 through 20. And I just wanted to take a minute and read that to you in the message. Um, I mostly read the, the New International Version, but I really like the way that the uh, message put Hebrews 6. It says, when God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word a rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab that promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God, where Jesus, running on ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us. I just, I, I don't think I ever knew that that was in the Bible and it was very, very um, appropriate for what we're trying to do here. So anyway, so I embroidered on this doll, on this shirt, grab the promised hope. And you will see that I just made it a big rectangle and I put Hebrews 6, 18 through 20 on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and lay it on my baby doll like this. And then on this side, I'm going to cut a slit. Excuse me, I have to get my scissors. And I'm just going to cut a slit down for her arm like this. And then I'm going to take this fabric and put it around my doll just like this. This is something that I'm sure you could probably figure out a way that you could do it 
on a sewing machine, it, but it works really well by hand and you can kind of just play around with the fabric and pin it in place. So I'm going to just take this t-shirt and I'm going to pin it around her waist like this and I'm going to hand stitch it to her body. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm back. Um, first thing I need to tell you is I lied. <laughs> um, when I did these letters, I made them a little bigger than I usually do. And when I went to go sew this onto her body, I realized the doll was a little bit, the shirt was a little big. So what I did was I cut all the way down the side. I took it to my sewing machine and I sewed this, the two side seams. So still, we're just working with rectangles here. I have one big rectangle here, one big rectangle here. I sewed a side seam up here and a side seam up here. So it's open here on the sides. And then I turned this up and I stitched it by hand uh, for the hem. The same thing. It's easier with this stretchy fabric sometimes just to stitch it by hand. Here's my doll. And I put her pants on her. And I held the waistband down. And I just did a running stitch all the way around. And then stitched, uh, tied a knot, and then stitched it to her waist in a couple of places to keep it from sliding back down again. So there's her legs. I mean, there's her pants on her. And here's the shirt that I made. And I'm going to turn it inside out. And since it's just a really stretchy rectangle, I can just kind of slide it over the edge of her feet like this. And up her body. And then what we're going to do... Is we're just simply going to tuck the shoulder seams down. I'm going to try and do this in a way that you can see it. I've got a whole bunch of pins right here. And you can see that, um, that I've just kind of folded the edges down. And if I fold the edge down all the way across then it kind of finishes the neckline at the same time. So I don't really have to do anything with her neckline. I just have to sew her, her um, shoulders. And I've shown you enough times in enough of these videos how to do a ladder stitch. So if you just physically sew this um, shoulder seam on there with a ladder stitch, you'll end up with a nice fitting t-shirt. I'm going to put the doll between my knees and I'm going to stitch this shoulder. And I'm actually going to just kind of do it very quickly. Um, if I was doing it for real, I probably would be a little bit more careful about the way I do this. But I'm just going to stitch it and then tie a knot. so that I can get to the next part here. Okay, so the next part is I have, let me see if I can find it. I have another rectangle. It's a very long piece of black fabric. I made sure the stretchiest part was going around the arm. That way it'll slide up. And I've cut it to fit approximately the length of her arm. This one looks like maybe it's a little longer than I thought it was, but that's okay. So then I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it like this, and I'm going to stitch it straight down. So I've made a long kind of sock-like tube, and here it is turned inside out. Then all I really have to do is put it on her arm just the same way that you would put a sock on, Moving it up, turning the edges into the inside, and pinning it to her shoulder like that. And then I'm going to stitch an invisible ladder stitch all the way around here so that I can't see how I sewed it on there. And then I'm going to turn this part down like this, and I'm going to put a hem in her um in her sleeve and i have to mention to you i mentioned a couple of times before that you can use fabri it's a really good glue for gluing fabric 
And um, if you want to do that, if you want to put a little Fabri-Tac in there and glue that part up, there's nothing wrong with that. That works just fine. And then um, I'll put the other sleeve on her and then we'll go ahead and we'll put some shoes on her after that. Okay, so let me go ahead and put that other sleeve on. Okay, so I'm back and I moved the camera again. I'm trying to figure out a best way to put these shoes on so that you can actually see what I'm doing. It's really hard to do hand sewing on it on the top of a table. I usually do it in my lap. Um, here's my doll. I've finished her little shirt and she has her pants on and I think I really like the way her hair came out pretty much everything is the way I wanted to but now I have to do her shoes um you don't have to do the shoes the way I do them I do them uh, kind of I, I I do it by the seat of my pants I just try and figure out what will work best but I do want to give you kind of an idea and then you can take that and kind of figure out your own way of doing shoes so I'm going to move the camera again and and kind of videotape my lap and show you exactly what I'm doing, okay? Uh, this has been a little bit of a, a difficult journey trying to figure out how to do these feet so you can see them. Uh, I hate showing you my lap. It looks just terrible, but we got to make this work somehow for us. So this, I'm in, I'm behind my counter and here's her feet. And um, whenever I make a shoe, I cut something out that kind of looks like a horseshoe. If you if you fold it in half like this, you're going to cut an oval around and then you're going to cut a part out of the middle. And it's kind of hard to figure it out until you take it and actually put it on her foot like this. I'm going to turn it. Let's see if we can turn it upside down like this. So here's her foot and here's her shoe and you put it on her like this. And wrap it around and that's what creates a shoe is something like that so that's what that this this entire shape is is a shoe shape so we're gonna put it on her foot and um, the first thing I do I have a bunch of little teeny tiny pins I really like these little pins and I'm gonna put it right in her foot like that so it holds it right there then I'm gonna turn it around like this and pull it up so that it goes around the back of her heel and I can put a little pin whoops I got two a little pin right here that'll hold that in place and then stitch it with really tiny stitches or you could put some um, Fabri-Tac on it and glue it if you want to do that and then you'll see this part here is is kind of um, just a big loose piece and if I run it in and out in and out let me um, I actually have red thread here, so I don't know how good this is going to look. But if I take my needle and go in and out and in and out and in and out, you know, like when you're trying to just run a gathering stitch around the edge of a yo-yo. Have you made quilt yo-yos before? So that's kind of what we're doing. We're just in and out, in and out, in and out. And then we're going to go all the way around until we've got shoe. Okay, so I've done the running stitch all the way around. And now I'm just going to give it a little pull. Don't pull on it too hard or you'll pull the shoe right off of the foot. But just gather it up so that it pulls down to the bottom. And then we're going to tie a knot. Okay, now I'm not even going to cut that thread. I'm going to leave it hanging, the needle and everything hanging off the bottom. Now I have another piece that I've cut, and it's also just an oval, and it's a little bit bigger than the bottom of her foot. Now I'm going to tell you something. This is a kind of a weird kind of felt that has a, a, a white side and a red side, but polar fleece or uh, stretch velvet or, or some felts, they're, they're magical because you can actually stitch on them pretty good without the stitches showing if you make your thread match. It's not like other fabrics where you've got to really hide those stitches. So I'm going to turn over under the edge like this. I'm going to put it on the bottom of my doll and I'm going to put a pin in it right here. And I'm going to put a pin right here. I'm really going to pin this good because I don't want it to move. And that's where these little tiny pins come in good. Okay, so now I've only pinned one side because it's almost impossible to do the other side, but I'll work it. Then I'm going to just take a stitch 
like that. And another stitch, kind of just a back and forth stitch. Here and here. And then here and here. And I'm going to just stitch this to the bottom of my foot. And after I get to the toe where I haven't got any pins, I'm going to tuck it under and tuck it under. And I'm going to put more pins in it. There isn't any real magic to this. It's just uh, kind of like you pinning it. Does it look good? It looks good to me. Okay, I'm going to sew it in place. So, just keep your stitches tiny and make sure your thread match is really good. And we'll stitch all the way the bo around the bottom of that foot and then I'll I'll come back in just a minute so I'm back and I finished my doll and I finished her shoes and you can see the bottom of the shoes there they're stitched all the way around and I think the tops came out really nice um, sometimes it's kind of plain around the edge if you use felt or polar fleece um, you, you don't have to finish the edges if you use like a stretch velvet or something like that. You may want to turn the edges under just a little bit and glue them. And then you might want to just kind of take a little bow that you could take it and we could just um, stick it right on the edge of the foot there. Or you could take, um, this is a, a little rosebud that I bought at uh, probably Joann's, but you can get them even at Walmart and just glue that in, in place. What I like to do when I glue is I use Fabri-Tac. I like it. It's a very fast working glue and you can put a little pin in it to hold it in place till it dries, but it doesn't take very long and then you can just go ahead and pull the pin out. This is actually a little girl's hair hair tie and you can buy these in the hair accessories department they make great little socks you could put them around the ankles you could put two or three of them around the ankles for accents they come out really cute but what i did is i put it around her shoe let me see if i can show it to you as an accent i pulled really hard and pinned it and then stitched it in place so that's like the little accent i put on it so that's my doll she came out pretty good i have to tell you kelly hi to all the ladies in um san diego and the doll ministry i miss you guys a whole lot i'm so excited about everything that you're doing there let's make 2021 a great year for making dolls and reaching out to children in crisis and now we can make these dolls and we can find more people we just have to keep praying and asking God he's going to tell us exactly where the dolls need to go um, but I have to tell you all that I made these arms just a little bit longer than I usually make them and the pattern that's on the doll ministry Facebook page they're a little bit shorter if you have an embroidery machine where you can enlarge them enlarge them make them longer if you look at the proportions they're not really realistic but I like the bigger hands so you can do that you can make them a little bit bigger you can make the legs a little bit longer too but if you're limited to a five by seven hoop then keep them the same size that I originally draw drew them so that way they'll fit inside your five by seven hoop um, so that's our dolls I don't know what we're going to be doing in the next week I think Easter's coming on us really fast I think I'm going to keep working on maybe making a, a a table runner with Easter eggs on it I'm even thinking about bringing my grandchildren in on it um it should be a lot of fun so keep an eye out for that in the meantime I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button subscribe and make a comment let me know if there's something that you thought was fun that you want to learn some more about or you might want to see some more techniques on your embroidery machine whatever um and I guess I will see you in about a week. Bye-bye.